Welcome back to the SciLife Academy. It's time for another training session. This course covers ISO 19011-2018, guidelines for auditing quality management systems and risk-based audit processes. We will have a high-level overview of how risk will be integrated into auditing all ISO management systems. In addition, we will discuss the following key concepts. Risk-based auditing, risk-based auditing programs, planning, audit realization, and reporting risk-based audits. Next lesson, we will discuss how to plan, conduct, and report a risk-based audit. Additionally, we will discuss tools and insider tips used by first party, second party, and third party auditors. Let's get started. In the life sciences industry, most organizations have implemented several management systems to oversee various aspects of their business operations. These systems are put in place to manage quality, manufacturing, regulatory compliance, environmental sustainability, health and safety, and so on. However, in order to achieve maximum benefit from these management systems, organizations must ensure that they are consistently improving their systems. This involves reviewing and assessing their systems regularly to pinpoint areas for improvement and implementing changes to make them better. Conducting frequent audits is an essential component of the continuous improvement process. Audits provide an opportunity to evaluate the performance of management systems and identify areas that require improvement. However, it can be a daunting task, particularly for organizations with multiple management systems in place. To tackle this challenge, organizations need to develop a systematic approach to auditing that guarantees all management systems undergo regular audits. Furthermore, they must ensure that the auditing process is comprehensive, transparent and objective. Any findings or recommendations must be acted upon promptly. Audit professionals are now expected to proactively adopt a far more strategic audit methodology where the risk assessment process is the key driver of the audit plan. At the same time, departments are expected to maintain an up-to-date view of overall risk levels across the organization, becoming more agile in their approach to target real areas of concern. Let me introduce you to ISO 19011-2018, an international standard that provides guidelines for auditing management systems. The standard covers everything from managing an audit program to auditing management systems. The standard is a comprehensive guide that covers every aspect of auditing, including planning, conducting and reporting on audits. It provides a framework that organizations can use to design and implement effective audit programs tailored to their specific needs. Additionally, the standard provides instructions on how to manage audit teams and conduct audits objectively, impartially and fairly. It can also be used to assess and evaluate the competence of individuals conducting audits, including audit program managers, audit team leads, individual auditors, technical experts and audit observers. By using these guidelines, organizations can make sure their audit programs are robust, objective and aligned with their goals. Before we go deeper into the lesson, let's see a few concepts that ISO 19011-2018 defines. We won't see them all, just the most important ones. The international standard mentions audits and combined audits. It also mentions first, second and third party audits, as well as joint audits. Let's have a look at them in more detail. On the one hand, an audit is a systematic, independent and documented process for obtaining objective evidence and evaluating it objectively to determine the extent to which the audit criteria are fulfilled. 
An objective evidence is any kind of data that supports evaluation of compliance with the relevant guidelines and requirements of the quality management system. On the other hand, a combined audit is carried out together at a single auditee on two or more management systems. In other words, a combined audit is an approach where two or more management systems of different disciplines are audited together. The standard concentrates on first-party audits and second-party audits. ISO 19011 uses first-party audits for internal audits, while second-party audits are conducted by organizations on their external providers and other external interested parties. And what about third-party audits? Well, they are those audits which are conducted by an independent organization such as a certification body, or CB, to determine compliance of a management system standard. A joint audit is an audit conducted by a team of auditors from two or more audit organizations which work together to carry out the audit activities. This type of audit can be useful for addressing a single management system or multiple management systems. According to ISO 19011-2018, an audit plan refers to the description of activities and arrangements for an audit. In other words, it is a narrative of the step-by-step -step activities that are needed to plan, conduct, and report the audit. For example, an audit plan should include these steps. Audit objectives, audit scope and criteria, the logistics, like where, when, and how long, establishing roles and responsibilities for auditors, risk assessment to identify potential issues that may arise during the audit, reporting and follow-up procedures for audits. On the other hand, audit programs are a list of steps audit staff must follow to obtain sufficient audit evidence. The concept of objective evidence generally refers to the data that supports the existence of something. For example, records, statements of fact, or other information which are relevant to the audit criteria and verifiable. Through a formalized process called audit sampling, auditors must collect evidence that can be proven to be factual. The audit criteria are then evaluated based on this evidence. In the absence of evidence that meets the criteria, the audit outcome may be impacted. Audit evidence includes information, records, data, and statements from auditees that can be used to determine whether audit criteria have been met. The word competence refers to the ability to confirm that a person has the knowledge, skills and abilities to do their job professionally. Auditing, for example, often requires specific competence requirements. It is important for auditors to demonstrate their competence. That's all. Thank you for attending this course. I hope you found it useful and that it has met your learning expectations. See you in other courses at the Academy as you continue your educational journey with SideLife.